Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna continue our series in drawing and we did some sketches last time. Today we're gonna to draw a little more precisely. We're gonna use, uh, we're gonna learn a new tool. We're gonna to use the uh, lasso tool or the marquee tool. We're gonna to use both of them and learn how to draw a little more cleanly and paint a little more cleanly uh, if we need to. Not that it's like the perfect way to draw or anything. It's just another tool to use when you're drawing. Okay. So let's take, let's just draw a cube first. Let's start with a cube and then we're gonna use a lasso tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a brush. So we're gonna start the same. I'm gonna go ahead and get, let's see. Uh, let's just get one of these general brushes. Let's get our, uh, I'm gonna get the hard round pressure brush, okay? And first thing I wanna show you, uh, this isn't the selection tool part yet, but let's, let's take a look at where layer we're on again. I'm on my sketch layer, that's fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a straight line. Now, instead of just trying to draw a straight line like when I was sketching before, this time I'm gonna hold down shift, okay? So hold down shift on your keyboard. And then it's gonna make your line go either vertical or horizontal, depending on which angle you start making your line at. So there's my first line there. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this top here and I'm gonna hold down shift again. There we go, now I got a nice little perfectly horizontal line. And again, going down. And then again, across, whoops. Okay, so it made a little line there. Let's get rid of that. That's from holding shift and getting lines a different way, but we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, got a cube here. Uh, actually got a square, right? We wanna turn this into a cube. So now let's go ahead and make some lines diagonal. Now I can't hold down shift and go diagonal. It's not gonna work. What I need to do is I need to click, hold down, hold down shift, click here, and then click at another spot. So if I do that and I'm holding shift, it'll make a straight line between them, okay, at whatever angle you want. So I'm gonna go ahead over here and try to get the same angle. So once again, I'm gonna click down with my pen. So I'm gonna hold down shift, click there, and then click over here. And I'm trying to make this line parallel to that line right now, just for a little like isometric cube. Okay, now I don't wanna do this line cause it's gonna be, um, that'll be blocked by the cube itself, but I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna hold down shift, click over there, kind of do it a few times to thicken up the line a little bit. Okay, now I can go ahead and finish off the back of the cube by holding down shift, going straight down until I hit the line and straight across. Okay, and you can see here that the line width kind of changes when I, oops, I held down shift again. Uh, when I do the shift and click from when I just do a stroke, there's a little bit of difference. It's not, I'm not trying to get, um, this is not to make a precise, exactly even line. This is just to get some straight lines. And there are other ways to make your line dead even, which we'll learn about soon enough too. Okay, but either way, I have a pretty precise cube. All right, a little cleaner than my other stuff, right? That's what I wanna show you guys. Okay, so now, let's say I wanna be really precise when I paint it, okay? I wanna, I wanna paint it nice and cleanly. For this, we're gonna use our selection tools. But first, what I would recommend is creating a new layer. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that little, um, little uh, triple, no, it's like the quadruple button bar right in the corner there. Then I'm gonna hit new layer. And I'll just name this one color. That's the one I'm going to color on, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move it below my sketch by dragging on it over here in the layers window. I'm gonna click, hold it down, drag until the blue little line goes below the sketch. And you can rearrange your layer orders however you want, except for the background. Background, I cannot move anywhere, right? It's gonna stay in the background. But my color, my sketch, and if I had more layers, I can arrange them however I want. So now I'm on my color layer, okay? So very important you pay attention to what layer you're on. And then we're gonna use, uh, let's use the lasso tool. Okay, so here it is. Three tools down, shortcut is L. And if you look inside the tool, there's three different versions. We just wanna use the lasso tool for now, not the bottom two, the top one. I've heard some people say lasso tool. I heard that and I was like, what? That, isn't it lasso? I don't know. So maybe it is lasso, but 
I call it a lasso because, you know, that's what it looks like, a cowboy lasso. So anyways, uh, now here's what I'm gonna do. With a, with a lasso tool, what you do is you can select certain pixels. So I'm just gonna do a little selection here so you can see, and it creates these marching ants. That shows you what pixels are able to be affected in Photoshop right now. So for example, again, you don't need to do this, just watch for a second. If I grabbed, let's see, I got my black here, I'll just keep black, and I got my paintbrush. If I try to paint over here, it's not gonna work. It's only gonna work within those pixels that are selected, okay? So that's what a selection does. It isolates certain pixels that can be affected while the rest of it stays protected. That rhymed and that's very strange. So <laughs> I didn't mean to rhyme that. Uh, protected and selected. Okay, so anyways, so let's clear the selection. Um, you can do that by clicking somewhere else, but sometimes you accidentally get another little selection. Um, so what you can do is hit Command D. Command D will deselect um, any selection you have on the screen. Okay, so now once again, it draws a selection, so I could draw, but that's kind of hard to get these straight lines with my lasso tool by drawing. But there is a shortcut. So if I'm using the lasso tool and I hold down Option, I can lift up, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click around the whole cube for now, and I can lift up and get these straight lines. So once again, I'm clicking, lifting my pen, clicking again, clicking, and I'm just gonna surround the whole cube here. Okay, and then I got marching ants around my selection. Now, that protects the rest of the paper, and I can paint in here and make, make this cube any color. Let's go ahead and pick a color here. I'll pick a sort of blue. And now, if I paint it in, let's see what brush I have here. The hard round, I'll go to that one, solid one. My opacity is at uh, 50. That means I would have to paint it a couple times to get it solid, especially if I don't press down hard enough. And I can fill it all in without affecting the rest of my image. Okay, so. Now that's one way, I can use my brush, but there's a better tool for this, okay, that I wanna show you. The other tool that we can use to fill this in, if I wanna just get a block of something filled in, is the paint bucket tool, okay? So G is a shortcut to get to this tool, but G stands for gradient, so you might be defaulted in your gradient tool. A gradient tool is cool, it'll do a gradient, you know, across your selection or your page or whatever you have, but that's not what I want right now. I wanna switch it by holding down on the little icon in the toolbar, switch it to paint bucket. Okay, so once I switch it to paint bucket, it's gonna dump in a full, like, just block of color. Um, the, the opacity was 100%. It, you can lower it, you know, if you want. You can affect some things here. But I did want it 100%, so it just fills in my cube of color. Fantastic, all right? So once again, that's a paint bucket tool. G is a shortcut. So now, um, now that I've got it all one block of color, I gotta add some value to it. I gotta add some value. Okay, so let's see. Let's try, okay, let's, I'm gonna stick with a similar lighting situation that I've had in the other ones. Um, and, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this front is gonna be darker, I guess, because I just wanna make something dark so we have an example. So I've got my selection, but now I just wanna select this part of the cube here. So I, I can basically just reselect it with a lasso tool. Okay, so now I wanna subtract from my selection. I could just reselect it, but let's sub subtract it. And since I have these straight lines, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves to the marquee tool, which is right above the lasso tool here, okay? Now the marquee tool, if I hold down, it's got a few options as well. It's got the rectangle marquee tool, rectangular, got the elliptical, and it's got these single row ones, which I've never really used before. I don't really ever need to select a single row. But maybe if I did, that would be useful. So uh, anyways, we wanna be on the first one, the rectangle tool. And again, it makes selections in a rectangle, but what I wanna do is I want to hold down option so I have a minus sign by it. Now with this, I can go ahead and drag up and I can subtract. Instead of drawing 
a selection, it's going to subtract a selection as long as I'm holding option. And there we go. Now I've subtracted those uh, parts of the selection, and I can just paint this front, right? Because remember, the selection is going to isolate the pixels, and I won't paint on anything else. So now I'm going to go to B for brush. I'm going to go to my uh, little color wheel over here, and I'm going to darken up my color because I want a shadow uh, or a shaded color of blue here. And flat surfaces pretty much paint they're, they're, or, or get light in the same, uh, have the same value when they get hit by light. Okay, so I'm gonna make it pretty big and I'm on the wrong brush. Let's switch brushes. So check your brush, unlike me. Let's go to soft round pressure and it's pretty much all gonna be a darker value. I'm gonna say the light's kind of not hitting it very strongly from this side. And remember, a lot of your lighting choices are just your decisions on how this world is that you're drawing, right? So I like to leave a little bit of a gradient on it, just because flat surfaces you do kind of see, uh, tend to see a little gradient sometimes, and I just think it looks a little better. Let's say I want to add a little more, so let's go like that, uh, hit it up, just a little bit. Just add a little bit of a variation, not from totally dark to like light, but from, you know, like dark to a little less dark kind of thing maybe, like that. And plus it might have a little reflected light coming back on the bottom. And there we go. So I've got one side pretty much hit with one color. So now I've got to go ahead and select another side. So now I've already subtracted the, uh, the selection. So let's just redraw it now. So I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. And I'm going to go ahead and get my lasso tool again. I'm going to hold down Option, start drawing, hold down Option so I get my straight line. Click, click. Click, click. Now here's the thing I just thought of. Option does two things here, the lasso tool. So if I start drawing, like here, like let me tell you exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm pushing down, I'm starting to draw slightly, then I'm holding down option. Then it gives me a straight line. So I have a selection like this, and now I hold down option, it's gonna give me a, a subtraction ability here to subtract my selection. So option does kind of two things in here depending on when you use it. But if you don't have a selection, uh, you should be able to just select and get the straight lines. So now I've got my next side ready to go. Now uh, this is going to be, I'm going to say the light is hitting the top a little more, and now I want to say this is just getting a little bit of value. So this is going to pretty much be my medium tone. I'm just going to kind of hit it a little subtly just like that, just a little bit. I want to keep it mostly medium, okay? Once again, I'm going to hit deselect, L is for lasso, I'm going to go ahead and hold shift. Start drawing a little bit now, hold down option. Let's get the top here. Got the top. B is for brush. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let me just reselect my original color up here, the blue. Then I'm gonna go up to like a lighter blue up here, right? Now I'm gonna hit that and get my highlight. Let's zoom out a little bit. Command D. And there we go. So I've got a, a, a bit more of a precise way to paint there. Uh, using the selection tool, right? A little less sloppy than that. Again, not that you always want to be that precise. Sometimes you want to sketch and just be a little looser. But if you need to be more precise, we can use these selection tools, okay? Let's do one more shape here. Let's go ahead and do a uh, sphere. So this time, let's just go ahead and use uh, the elliptical marquee tool. So I'm not even gonna bother drawing it. I'm just gonna make an ellipse here. So once again, I'm going up here, switching from the rectangle to the elliptical marquee. And let's go ahead and hold shift. I, I can start making my lasso, and then as long as I hold down shift, it's gonna give me a perfect circle. Okay, and I'm gonna let go of the pen, then lift up um, shift. So I've got a perfect circle there with my selection. Let's go ahead and make this one a red sphere. So I'm going to go over to my color, pick a nice little red there. G, once again, is the shortcut for the paint bucket. Let's dump that in there. B is for brush. And the first thing I want to do is start with my uh, core shadow. But I want to start with a big brush. Let's make sure I have the right one. Yeah, I want a soft, round brush here. So it's going to get a nice blend. So I got my fingers in the brackets. I'm gonna make them pretty big here. I'm gonna hit it with a pass. 
and go a little smaller. But I want to keep that brush nice and big. Let's go a little deeper now for the very deepest part of the core shadow there. And I have a nice little blend from my core shadow to my highlight here. I left a little bit of edge for the reflected light back there, okay? If you overpaint, it has a tendency to not look good, okay? So be careful of overpainting. Um, and if you're doing this for the first time, it's okay to just hit delete and just do it again, okay? No big deal. Okay, so larger brush is gonna be helpful. Uh, making sure your opacity is low. I had it at 50%, but I might even recommend you doing it at like 30% or something like that. Somewhere in that zone, that might be easier. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a highlight. I'm gonna go ahead and slide my um, hue over towards the orange a little bit. I'm gonna make it brighter. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to this zone. And again, I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger here. Paint it in there, make it, make it smaller as I go. And I get to like my highlight there. I can even go a little closer to white. General rule of thumb is you don't want to highlight with white and you don't want to shade with black. You always wanna keep some color in there. Okay, it's gonna look better than just going straight to black and white. All right, got a highlight. Let's do reflected light. Reflected light, the default kind of color is just like a desaturated blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my blue, bring it over towards this like gray over here, and hit this backside. Again, this is light that is not hitting the sphere and then bouncing off stuff over here and then relighting up this sphere on the other side here. A Little bit of reflected light there. And there we go. We've got a sphere. Hit Command D. All right, let's just finish it off with one more use of the selections tool. Uh, so we can just, let's add a shadow with it. So I'm gonna go to my background layer now. So just to make sure I don't paint on my sphere here, I'm gonna go behind it. I'll go to the background layer. Let's go ahead and get the um, elliptical marquee tool again. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a thin ellipse here. That's gonna be my shadow. So I'm gonna kind of place it underneath a little bit so I can uh, maybe a little overlapping there and I can move it too until I see the little arrow there and then pick it up and move it where I want it to go. Okay, B is for brush. Now that I got it in place, let's go ahead and get, I'm gonna now, now I'm gonna get black because I'm actually doing a shadow. Even though shadows aren't always black, but this one will be. So it's behind my color layer, right? So if you don't switch layers, you're gonna paint on top of your sphere. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna be on my um, background layer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and paint in shadow. I'll make it a little darker towards the, uh, right under the sphere, and then I'll have it like blend out just a little bit. Okay, there's a shadow. Um, another trick that I'll probably tell you before, uh, or when we paint more, is uh, Command H, and that hides your selection. That's super helpful when you're painting, so you can actually see what it looks like without the marching ants. But I'll keep reminding you of that shortcut as well. So Command H hides the selection. And there it is. All right, we've got a cube, and then we've got a really clean looking sphere because we didn't even use lines for it. And just a little taste of how to use a selection tool to get some cleaner painting, some cleaner drawings done in Photoshop. All right guys, hope that was helpful, and I'll see you guys on the next video.